What is up, everybody? Welcome to Apex Bonsai. I'm Dylan, and in front of you here, I have three Shimpaku Junipers. These two on the end, they are Kishu variants. This one in the middle is an Itoyagawa. Now, these two on the end, the Kishus, I've had for a while. Peyton and I have actually made a video about them that I'll have linked at the top of the screen right now. Uh, we brought them home, we cleaned them up, we started a series called From Cutting to Competition, where we're going to document the journey of these uh, Kishu Junipers from cuttings to our entering a competition with them. It's gonna be a fun series, so make sure you follow along with that. Uh, this one I just brought home. I actually took part in a workshop where my bonsai club brought in Moro Stenberg. Uh, I believe I'm saying his name right. He's an Italian bonsai artist, uh, has a pretty big following on YouTube. You may have watched some of his videos. He came to the club. Uh, they had six spots open. I filled one of them. We all worked on these uh, beautiful Itoyagawa junipers. It's my first time working with, with, that, uh, with that type of juniper. And uh, we worked together to make this tree that you're seeing here, which is by far my best tree. Uh, but I wanted to talk about that experience today because going through that workshop and working with him has really been a big moment for me in my bonsai journey. It's completely changed the way that I looked at the material that I had at home and the thought process I have when approaching them. Uh, and also I'll talk about this tree a little bit, the plans for it and how we came up with this design. All right, now before we dig into this tree and talk about the workshop a little bit more, do want to remind you, if you're enjoying the content, please subscribe. It's free, uh, it helps support the channel. We're having a lot of fun here and it's greatly appreciated. So uh, if you enjoy it, subscribe, thank you. Now, as far as this tree goes, uh, this was a first for me in many ways. First time ever uh, creating gin. Uh, first time ever doing any dead work, uh, dead wood work at all. Uh, first time working with an Itoyagawa juniper. Uh, and first time working on a design with the goal of it being a shohen. Okay, now I might have material here that could eventually be shohen, but this is the first time that I've looked at something and said, let's make a shohen bonsai out of this. Uh, and uh, that's what we did with this. I think the big thing for me that I, that I learned from that is whenever I saw him working with the material and, and you know, it, it going from, from really rough, almost like nursery stock and seeing, you know, working with him through the decision processes, we looked at a lot of the limbs and recognized the problem, stuff that we couldn't use and stuff that if somebody had been uh, maybe taking care of this a little bit closer, those limbs would have had a little bit more interest to them or design or curve and they would have been usable. But because they weren't, we just had to cut them and get rid of them and use them in a different way or use them as dead wood or something like that. I want to take just a moment to get a little bit more specific on that concept that I just went over there. Because again, this is the number one thing that I learned and benefited from this process. On the screen right now, I'm showing you the tree before Maro and I worked on it at all. This was just raw. And you can see there's some longer, leggier growth there in those secondary limbs that are very boring. They're very, they're perfectly straight. They go out and they got a little bit too long in the development of this tree. And he was able to kind of bend those back, uh, some of them, and incorporate them into the design and use them, but some of them weren't able to be used. And it was sad because it was really thick, healthy growth, and it just wasn't developed as well as it could have been, um, or else it could have added to the tree instead of having to be removed. And it really made me look at my developing and my material. And I'd always kind of looked at wiring before as when you have a design, you wire the tree into the shape of the design that you want. And that's true, you know, but it can also be important to use wire as part of the development of the tree to add character. On these two key shoes that, I, that I'm showing later in this video, I don't have necessarily a final design firmly in mind. I have an idea of where I'm going, but going through this process and seeing the material on this tree that he could use and that, you know, was problematic, that, that, that was too boring, it made me look at my trees differently and think about what can I do right now in their development process to make sure that all the material has potential to be used and added to the design later on. And maybe it will, maybe it won't. I'm sure I'm going to end up cutting some stuff off of these trees, but I wanted to make sure that I, I just wasn't, uh, you know, um, growing out these long leggy shoots uh, and secondary limbs like what this tree had. And that really, I think, is going to help me develop higher quality material throughout my collection. And with that in mind, that's how we ended up with getting wire on these. 
And um, I, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that these are the final designs by any means. I don't think that they are. But I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, what I did here um, and uh, where I'm going with this. Okay, so once I realized, like, hey, if you let this develop too much and you get too straight, it's going to be boring and unusable, and you can actually set it back. Uh, I came home and looked at it and decided to apply some wire. Now, don't roast me on the wire. There's a lot of wiring mistakes here. But the big thing that I'm going with with this one is I added some more curve up here. It had a little bit of curve down here on the trunk, if you remember. Uh, I added some more curve up here. I brought, the big thing is I brought this bigger branch right here down to the side. And the, the, the vision I have for this is kind of like a semi cascade with some layers here. So eventually I want to fill this in right here. This will be like kind of a platform, then develop this into a platform, another kind of platform right here, and then eventually bring this apex up to here. Um, that's the vision, kind of a, a full on this side, probably some dead wood over on this side, you know, uh, more sparse over here, almost look like Maybe, you know, if this tree was out in nature, something was happening on this side that didn't promote growth. And on this side, all the sun was over here or uh, something was, was going on over here to, to promote growth more and allow it to fill in more. That's what we're going for here. But more than anything, I just wired this tree out and had the confidence to do so because of that workshop with Mauro. Um, that was the big thing I took away from that. Um, I, it was the first time with him taking a tree and wiring the whole thing. What I had been doing up to this point was, you know, just wiring a branch. Like I, if I saw a branch and I was like, that's a problem, I need to get it here um, and I want it to grow here, then I would like wire one branch. But with him and that tree, I wired through the whole tree, even like the tertiary stuff. And then he came in and we sat down and started bending. And, and when you have everything wired, you can move it into a place and then move another branch down and be like, okay, this would look better over here. It just makes everything a lot easier. And working through it with this tree, again, I'm not going to say this is a final design. I'm sure there's lots of problems here, but it's way more interesting as I'm developing this tree than it was. So I'm happy about that. Now, the next key shoe, I would say I, I have less, I'm less sure about the vision for this one than even that other one. Uh, but again, the big thing is that I got wire on a lot of these branches that were, that were way too straight. I got some curve in them so that as they continue to develop, you know, they'll have, they'll be interesting uh, and I'll, I'll have options for how I can use them. Um, I, if I do have a vision for this now, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking for this one to let it grow a good bit taller, keep these curves going right here and then just kind of add like a nice apex, rounded out apex right here with some really interesting dead wood in the lower parts here. I can definitely see like looking at this, this has too many branches right now for a design. Like I'm going to need to get rid of this but I don't have a clear enough vision right now where I felt comfortable cutting many of these branches off. So I decided to leave them until I have a, a clearer vision in mind for the, for the, for the design of it. Uh, but I can definitely see in the future developing these lower branches into uh, more gin and uh, making them kind of the interesting deadwood and taking this kind of spiral effect on up with, with a nice interesting um, apex up here. That's like, that really fills out. That's all I really know with this one, but Again, I think the, the big thing I really wanted to talk about right here is if you have the opportunity to join a bonsai club in your area, 100% recommend it. If you have the opportunity to go to a workshop where they bring in an artist and to work with them on design, I highly recommend it. You know, I've been doing bonsai now for about a year. All I've really done up to this point is keep them alive. Um, and learn the horticultural aspect. Very little design here and there. You know, entering um, the my my cascade into uh, the expo was a little bit of a learning experience, but very little design. I learned more in four hours that day as far as design and how to dip my toe in design and, and make things interesting than I have in the past year. So can't recommend that enough. All right, so here is the Shohen one more time. You know, I think. I think right, I'm gonna have. I think the the big thing that I'm gonna learn with this, as far as keeping this design, is keeping it compact and taking, um, allowing it to grow and fill in without it getting too big to where it falls out of that shohen category. Um, I'm loving, I'm loving the tree. So I'm I, I'm in love with this tree. I, I like I, I stare at it a lot. I still have to put the lime sulfur on the gin to whiten it up, and it's gonna be my first time working through that. 
Um, I definitely, it, it has some juvenile growth on it that I want to uh, obviously get fuller and develop over time, but uh, I'm really excited for the foundation that I have here and really excited to uh, work on a Shohen piece because, you know, it's, it's also opened my eyes up to other material I have. Is that possible Shohen? And that puts me closer in many ways to a final product if there ever is one in, in, in Doing Bonsai. Um, but, but, you know, when you're working with Shohen, maybe you don't have to let something grow super tall or super thick in order to start, you know, implementing a design that you have in mind. And that's, that's another thing I've really taken away from that. So huge moment for me in my bonsai journey. Just wanted to get on here and share it with you and show the uh, progress of our two Kishu junipers, as well as introduce you to my first Itoigawa uh, juniper. And I'm sure you'll be seeing them more on the channel moving forward. If you enjoyed this, Please make sure that you like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.